Greetings. Can everybody hear me? Unclear. All right. Welcome everybody to the Promises to Keep Breakfast 2021. I'm Judge Lawton Stevens. I'll be your MC for the 57th year in a row, I think it is. We got a great show for you today. Uh, I do want to make a special shout out to my colleagues at the judges table who've come through as usual. We uh, obviously have a virtual breakfast this year. Uh, there's no buffet line, so there's uh, no bean for Judge Green, no bacon for Judge Macon, and no word that rhymes with Judge Oslander. But I hope the lawyers never find out that a judge will do anything for a box of thin mints. So we're going to have fun this morning. You'll see that this challenge of the worldwide pandemic is no match for a determined Girl Scout. Uh, you're going to love to see the videos that the Girl Scouts have put together and the projects that they've been working on to make the world a better place. So we're going to have fun this morning, and we're glad y'all are here. So to kick off the program, we'll have the presentation of colors and the Girl Scout promise in law. Ayudar a las personas en todo momento. I would do my best to be honest and fair, friendly and fair, helpful, friendly and helpful caring, courageous and strong, and, strong responsible. and responsible for what I say and do, and to respect, to respect myself and others. To respect authority. Use resources, use resources wisely. Make the world a better place. And be a sister to every Girl Scout. Good morning, Girl Scout friends. I'm Sue Well, CEO of Girl Scouts of Historic Georgia, and I want to welcome you to our 21st annual Promises to Keep Breakfast. My goodness, we are so happy to be with you today. We are hosting the breakfast again virtually. We never imagined that it would be virtual again this year. I so wish I could see all of your faces. We recognize that conditions are not exactly the same because there wasn't a vaccine in sight last September. However, our hospitals are full again, and sadly, even in the GSHG family, we have lost volunteers to COVID. However, in spite of it all, we continue providing a high quality Girl Scout experience while keeping our girls and their families safe. One of the ways we've tried to keep everyone safe is providing clear guidelines for our leaders. We have followed CDC recommendations to wear a mask, stay socially distant, and take activities outdoors when we can. We also learned how to make some of our trademark events virtual. The breakfast is one of them, which was wildly successful last year. I want to thank all of you for attending this year, and of course, a big thank you to our sponsors for supporting Girl Scout leadership. The value of every member of the Girl Scout movement has never been clearer. Over the past 18 months, we have been challenged in every way. Yet Girl Scouts, girls, leaders, volunteers, board members, donors, and staff have risen to the occasion. Because of your dedication to our girls, we remain strong. Another event that we held virtually this year 
was QuestFest. Girls from all over our country and the world joined us. Girl Scouts still know how to have fun and they still know how to make new friends even during a pandemic. I thought you might enjoy seeing Girl Scouts and their families being Girl Scouts. QuestFest is a Girl Scout program event like no other. It's part scavenger hunt, part challenge course, and it's just amazing. During this incredible Girl Scout event, girls have loads of fun while doing activities that teach them leadership skills. It involves STEM, science, technology, engineering, and math activities, and they st it strengthens their sisterhood bond. So next up is a great Quest Fest video I hope you enjoy. Again, thank you so much for your support and for starting your morning with us. We really appreciate you. On your mark, get set, go! Those always crack me up. Good morning, I'm Cheryl Leggett, the COO of Girl Scouts of Historic Georgia. And as Sue mentioned, this year has been, well, a doozy to put it technically. We've had some successes and adapted in ways we are proud of. However, we must admit it hasn't all been coming up daisies. The Girl Scouts will get that. Frankly, membership has been a struggle. With schools in flux and in-person activities challenging, we ended 2020 down 14% and our 2021 membership year will end at 38% down. Yes, that is a big drop, but we're glad that that gap isn't larger. Fundraising has been especially difficult as you'd imagine with United Way cuts and events that had to be canceled. Businesses and individual supporters were hesitant to give with the uncertainty of the economy. But we've had some successes, and thanks to you, the breakfast has been one of our bright spots. In fact, we also had good participation in the cookie and fall products programs this year. We had several measures in place, of course, to protect the health and safety of our girls. And the leaders uh, usually uh, found some very innovative ways to sell cookies. We had booth sale partitions, we had drive-through booths, and we had online sales. We also had a new partner this year, Grubhub. And although our cookie program ended under budget, unlike other councils, we didn't end up with loads of extra inventory. And that's thanks to the exemplary work of our troops, service leaders, and our product team. Our, product, our program team also stepped up big last year and cranked out some amazing virtual programs each week. 
Girl Scouts in our council and around the country participated. We hosted summer camp in 2020 using a new innovative approach called Camp Outside the Box, where 450 girls received their summer camp experience in the mail to use in their backyard or at a local park. This year, we had in-person camp and it was awesome. We did have reduced occupancy during, you know, because of the COVID guidelines and space limitations. But as you can see in the earlier videos, the girls still had a blast. Now, one positive result from all of this is we'll be able to keep doing many of our virtual programs along with our in-person programs. And we hope that'll enable us to reach far more girls than we have been able to in the past. We believe that one of the reasons that Girl Scouting has been around for 109 years is because we adapt. As the world changes, we change. We go where the girls lead us. Now, as mentioned earlier, this is our 21st Promises to Keep Breakfast. Some of you have been coming since the beginning. And in our next segment, you'll meet two Girl Scouts from Troop 2029. One is Michelle, a grown-up Girl Scout who attended the very first breakfast. Yes, she's my daughter. And the second is a 10-year-old Girl Scout, Violet, who's a, a breakfast veteran too. Now, since they share the same troop number and mothers who work for the council, we thought it would be fun for you to see them have a conversation about their Girl Scout experiences. They have some things in common and some things are different. You'll note that while they're together, they're socially distanced and Michelle, a teacher now, has been vaccinated. Yes, even in our fun, we continue to make decisions that keep a girl's safety as our number one priority. I wanna give a big thank you to all of you for your help, for weighing in and for offering your assistance every step of the way. Because of you, we're still strong and we're looking forward to a bright Girl Scout future. We appreciate you. Well, there's your update. Next up, Michelle and Violet, my baby girls. Hi, my name is Violet from Troop 1 2029. And this is my new friend, Miss Michelle. Hello, I am Michelle. I'm currently an adult Girl Scout, but I was also in Troop 2029 when I was little. I understand you have some questions for me today. Yes. My first question is pros and cons of having a Girl Scout mom. Awesome. Well, my answer kind of answers both of them. So a pro is that we went to almost every event together. So. Me, my mom, and my sister, so we spent a lot of time together and got to do a lot of cool activities and have a lot of cool memories. And a con is definitely if an event started really early or if it ended really late, we were also there very early. We were also there very late. I know how you feel. <laughs> my second question is, do you keep in touch with your Girl Scout Troop members? Yeah, so... Some of them, not really just because they moved away to different states and at that age it's kind of hard to keep contact with them, but a lot of them I graduated from high school with and one of them ended up being my college roommate for a couple of years. And so we went to football games together and went shopping and she taught me how to do a lot of makeup. And so I talked to a good amount of them today. A question I have for you is what is something that you like to do with your troop? Probably going camping. I've gone camping a couple of times and it's just really fun and I'd love to do it again. What is your best Girl Scout memory? My, ooh, my best Girl Scout memory is actually a badge on my Cadet Fest. I went to Space Camp in Huntsville, Alabama. Um, when I was around 13, and so it was really cool. We got to do a lot of STEM and science <coughs> activities. We got to do a lot of um, rides to make it feel like we were in space. I got to meet girls from all over the country, and some of them I'm still friends with on social media, so I get to keep up with their lives now, and so that was definitely one of my favorite memories. What did you learn in Girl Scouts that helps you today? So something I learned in the Girl Scouts was definitely planning and time, um, time management. 
when we had to do booth sales and wanted to think about what we wanted to spend our money on from our cookie sales, we had to make time together to meet on what time would be a good time to sell cookies and what would be a good use for our money for planning a trip. And then when we worked on our bronze award, we had to make a plan to meet together because we were all very busy when we got older. And so it would be good times for us to meet together and when could we plan, when could we execute all of our ideas. And so all of that time membership, time management and planning um, definitely is something I keep with me today. What is your favorite junior badge? My favorite junior badge is we went to the aquarium, so something that we wanted to spend our money on when we um, sold cookies is we really wanted to go to the aquarium. And it was the very first year that the Georgia Aquarium opened. And so we got to take tours and we got to see all the cool sea animals and learn what it was like to be a worker at the aquarium. And it was so much fun. We loved every minute of it. If you could be a Girl Scout cookie, what would it be? Um, probably a Thin Mint. It isn't my favorite cookie, but I feel like I have the personality of a Thin Mint. Love it. <laughs> Bye! That was a great job by Michelle and Violet. And I wonder what kind of personality is a Thin Mint personality? But that was really good. Um, it's my privilege to introduce our speaker, Dr. Christina Foss. She's a native of Athens. She went to Cedar Shoals High School, graduated from University of Georgia with honors, and she got her PhD in primate malarias from Princeton University. So if your gorilla comes down with malaria, you know who to call. She's currently a postdoctoral scholar in the Center for Infectious Disease Dynamics at Penn State University with the Barty Lab. And get this, her research focuses on the impact of anthropogenic change on pathogen transmission among multiple host species with the aim of understanding drivers of human disease risk. You think we need that now? I think we do. She's serious about saving the environment She's serious about saving lives. And if anybody can do it, she can. And now joining us live all the way from Ireland, our speaker, Dr. Christina Foss, welcome. Thank you so much for that uh, kind introduction, Judge Stevens. Um, and it's an immense pleasure to be here today to talk to you all. So hopefully everyone can see the screen. Yes. Um, so my name is Christina Faust, as you mentioned. Um, I'm a lifetime Girl Scout and I grew up um, in Girl Scouts of Historic Georgia or the previous version of it. Um, and it's just such a wonderful opportunity to talk to you all today about how Girl Scouts has shaped my life. And it's been a really nice opportunity to reflect on it. Um, and if I were to talk about all of the ways in which Girl Scouts has affected me, we'd be here all day. Um, I only have 10 minutes. So I'm gonna focus on three things that has really kind of shaped um, my experiences and who I am um, today. So um, Girl Scouts has always believed in individuality and the programs and activities that Girl Scouts does helps foster individual interest. And this is either through badge work. So these are my this is aging me. These are my old um, badges from brownies and juniors, but also through the activities. So I love the outdoors and being able to be in the outdoors with other Girl Scouts in my troop, um, either through beach cleanups, through service activities or through camping um, was an amazing opportunity and helped develop some really exciting skills despite this very um, sad look on my face. I was enjoying it. Um, and one of the kind of incredible opportunities is um, gold award projects or silver award projects where girls have the opportunity to develop their own interest. And um, for my gold award, which is in 2005, um, I designed and painted this exhibit um, in the restrooms at Sandy Creek Nature Center. Um, so this was able to combine my interest in nature and art. Um, so I painted these species and then in these boxes are sculpted fecal samples. Um, so um, 
it was a really cool opportunity and it's exciting that it's still there. Um, but things I learned in that gold award project actually still apply to my daily life actually. So this is a picture from two years ago when I was last in the field. Um, this is on the shape, um, shores of Lake Victoria. Um, I now work on infectious disease, and in particular, I'm focused on diseases that affect vulnerable communities. Um, and this picture um, is very glamorously showing um, some field work. So these are funnels that I've sewn, which is another Girl Scout skill. And what we're using these funnels for is isolating parasites out of fecal samples. And what's really exciting is that once we isolate these parasites, we can use DNA sequencing to identify where these tiny microorganisms infected that person. And then we use this to kind of redistribute control efforts and stop transmission. Um, and all this work is done with my wonderful colleagues at the Ministry of Health in Uganda. This is Fred and Chantia, just two of them here. And so I used to have to explain why it's important to study animal and environmental health to inform human health, but unfortunately, the COVID-19 pandemic has driven that point home to many. Um, but in addition to causing pandemics, zoonotic infections are actually a significant um, form of morbidity and mortality in human populations around the globe. And things that we think of that are human diseases like measles or flu originated in animals. So understanding why these diseases are crossing over into humans and when they do that is really important. Um, so we know that deforestation and environmental change does increase this risk, but we don't know why. Um, and understanding why is really important to developing better solutions and improving global health and ultimately preventing the next pandemic. We're not there yet, but we're definitely working on it. Um, so the kind of second pillar that I wanted to talk about was um, courage. So this um, Girl Scouts are constantly pushing you to try new opportunities new things and um, especially things that are outside your comfort zone. And I um, participated in Girl Scout Wider Opportunities, which are now called Destinations and had the wonderful support of the council to help me financially and kind of emotional support to go on these. So the first, um, these trips are organized either at a national or international level and kind of expose you to new careers and new ideas. And so the first trip I went to, I flew on a plane by myself, I think I was 12, and this is me out on a schooner. Uh, we were rigging the schooner um, for a week out on Lake Michigan and learning all new techniques. And it was really exciting, but also terrifying. Um, and I also got to live out a dream by going dog sledding in Northern Minnesota in minus 20 degree weather. Um, this was a 10 day, cross-country dog sledding expedition that we went on. And two of the days I was completely by myself with um, a pot, uh, a, a back, box of matchsticks, a tarp and a sleeping bag. Um, so I think if you can get through two days um, with just that, you can do about anything. And Girl Scouts is really good about kind of teaching people their own capacity. Um, and it really, Girl Scouts really kind of started my travel bug. So I'm from Athens, as you mentioned, and Girl Scouts took me kind of even across the pond. So I went to England at a Girl Scout jamboree, and then my Girl Scout troop decided to go to Puerto Rico for our last trip together, um, using all that cookie money that we, we gathered all through that time. Um, but then I continued traveling um, in my undergraduate career and during my PhD, and it brought me to many places. So there's infectious disease and environmental change around the globe. And there's many, many opportunities to study it, which is a, a lucky part of my job. Um, and in my career, I work a lot with people in Uganda mostly, but also work with people in China and Vietnam. Um, and what we know is that infectious disease is, it does not respect national boundaries um, and, and taking this international perspective is really important for addressing these challenges. And although we've got great vaccination rates um, in some places in the world, we've got a lot more to go for this pandemic to end. And can, Girl Scouts has kind of provided me this opportunity to have this global perspective. Um, and what kind of just want to highlight one part that we're doing in Uganda that's really exciting. So um, this is myself and Diana Ajambo, um, who's a master's student in Makareri in Uganda. And this is actually our own lab. 
Um, so we all know that diagnostics are really important. So when you get a cough now, you go take a COVID test and, and waiting for those results is really agonizing. And sometimes it takes up to two days. But if you're living in the communities where I work, you might not find out for months the results of that test and, and altering your behavior for that long is not possible. Um, so this is bringing the diagnostics to them and this is completely off grid. So we are using solar panels um, to do DNA extractions. And this is actually a, a tomato. Um, hut that we're using as our clean room. And this is a little PCR machine that's run off our solar panels. And we can actually take a sample and get a diagnostic result in four hours, which is really exciting and really empowering for communities. So we're hoping to kind of develop this capacity moving forward. The last thing I wanna talk about is resilience. And I think the whole presentation today has really kind of emphasized how resilient Girl Scouts are. Um, and it's really exciting to see the creativity of what people have done um, in spite of these challenges. And when I was kind of thinking, I didn't have a pandemic during my Girl Scouting years, um, but I was thinking about resilience in Girl Scout cookies. So anyone who's ever sold Girl Scout cookies outside a grocery store will know you get a hundred no's for every one person that buys a, a box, but, but that doesn't mean you stop asking. So kind of continuing to, to ask people and continuing to try is really important in Girl Scouting. And it's also been really important um, to have a really wonderful community around you. So this is my troop on our last um, trip to Puerto Rico, um, which was really wonderful. And I had the opportunity to have many friends in Girl Scouting throughout the years. And I also had wonderful mentors, um, including my mom, who is my troop leader. And this is my um, great aunt who passed away this this past year, um, but she got her gold award um, during the Great Depression. So it's important to have people around you that support you, um, especially when things aren't going well. Um, so in my career now, I work in STEM fields, which um, women are overrepresented when we're in bachelor's and, and master's degrees, but um, it's become unfortunately known as the leaky pipeline. So as we advance in our careers, the percentage of women that are around me has declined. So at the moment, I am a a female researcher and, and only one of every three colleagues around me are females. And this even declines um, at kind of more higher levels. And so I think um, it's been really important to me in my career to stick with it. And I've received many, many no's, but um, fortunately, um, I think a combination of stubbornness and also where we are in today's world. I am I just received a grant, a $1 million grant to kind of develop my own lab. Um, and it's working with these colleagues in Uganda. And um, it's a really exciting project that's looking at how environmental change affects rodents and the communities of rodents and the pathogens they have, and then how this affects humans. And so the hope is um, working with USAID will develop some better control strategies that will improve human livelihoods and also environmental health. Um, and I think all of this is a testament to how much Girl Scouts has kind of driven me forward throughout my life. Um, and I want to thank you guys for your time and really hope you'll give, because um, I think I've had so many incredible opportunities. And um, I think the sky is the limit for Girl Scouts. And I think this next video will definitely show that as well. Brave and bold, brave and bold, make the world a better place. Brave and bold, brave and bold, make the world a better place. Women are so powerful. Women are so powerful. Brave and bold, brave and bold, make the world a better place. Brave and bold, brave and bold, make the world a better place. Women are so powerful. Women are so powerful. Brave and bold, brave and bold, make the world a better place. Brave and bold, brave and bold, make the world a better place. Wow. Brave and bold, 
make the world a better place. And women are so powerful. Those are strong words from the mouths of some very confident Girl Scouts. Good morning. I'm Marty Horn, and I'm proud to be a member of the Girl Scout Athens Regional Advisory Board, serving this year's fundraising chair. I trust you all have enjoyed seeing our Girl Scouts in action this year through the video presentations we've shown you this morning. Christina, thank you so much for joining us all the way from Ireland and for your amazing remarks. Girl Scouts certainly does instill character, courage, and resilience in every girl. Thank you for helping us understand how your Girl Scout experience has positively affected your life and your career. You are so accomplished and make us so very proud. In the last video, you heard from these junior Girl Scouts that they are brave and bold, they make the world a much better place, and they know that women are so powerful. Please know that even in the continued uncertainty of COVID, your hometown Girl Scout board made a brave and bold move, setting a $50,000 fundraising goal for this breakfast. I'm happy to report that our community answered the Girl Scout call and gave generously. Before we talk about the total raise to date, I wanna thank the following who answered the call through making an investment to sponsor our Promises to Keep Breakfast. These folks help make our world a better place each and every day. Athens Seed and Lawn, excuse me, Athens Seed Lawn and Garden, Current Collaboration, Georgia Power Company, Good Works Consulting, Hedgerow Farm, The Holder Family in honor of Clementi Holder, Jackson EMC, Lavender Pest Control, Oconee State Bank, John and Mary Pageant, Piedmont Athens Regional, Shushan Express, Synovus, the University of Georgia, and Zaxby's. Please know that in addition to our sponsors, there were many, many other businesses and individuals that have supported this campaign. And we wanna take this opportunity to thank them all. You know, as mentioned earlier, this is our 21st breakfast. And I learned that we raised $5,500 that year. I guess that was in 2000. But because of our community's generosity, we've done much <laughs> I'm proud to announce that we surpassed our $50,000 fundraising goal by 17%, raising $58,600. And we're still counting the gifts that are coming in. Again, a huge thank you to our sponsors and all of our donors. As our COO Cheryl Aguette said in her remarks, Girl Scouting provides high quality programs for our girls. That is so true. You've seen it in the videos. You've seen it from Christina's remarks. These programs help our young women see their potential, dream big, and then be able to reach their bold and audacious goals, just like Christina. She exemplifies the previous video. She's brave and bold, making our world a better place, a woman who is so powerful. And she grew up right here in our community, in our Girl Scout program. Are you feeling the pride yet? Whenever I'm asked to make a charitable gift to an organization, I want to understand the impact that gift will make. I'm proud to report that even during the continuation of the pandemic, girls are safely enjoying outdoor events, learning about the environment and how to manage money, providing service to our community, much needed service to our community, learning about computers, world cultures, and so much more, all because of Girl Scouts. For over 100 years, we've stayed true to our mission of developing girl leaders, and this year will be no different. The impact scouting makes on girls and young women is immeasurable. Just ask Christina. Talk about impact. Did you know that Girl Scout fuels the female leadership pipeline? 50% of female business leaders are Girl Scouts. 72% of female U.S. Senators are Girl Scouts. And 100% of female U.S. Secretaries of State are Girl Scouts. That's astounding. I think we can all agree that an investment in Girl Scouts is very impactful. So if you have not yet made a gift, but you like what you've seen and heard today, please consider making a gift to Girl Scouts. Help us stop the leak in the female STEAM, STEM pipeline Christina mentioned. Help us continue to inspire and enable girls to become 
women who are so powerful. You can make your gift online, by phone, or good old snail mail. In fact, to make it really easy for you to give, check out the chat box to find the online giving link. Again, on behalf of each of our Girl Scouts, our board and our staff, my sincere thanks to all of you who have chosen to make a gift to help us secure over $58,600 to date and counting. I can't wait to see what our Girl Scouts will achieve this year due to your generous support. Back to Judge Stevens. Thank you, Marty. I just want to once again, thank all our donors, our sponsors and the Promises to Keep team for all the support for these young Girl Scouts who through character, courage, and resilience are changing the world for the better every single day. So I hope everybody stays healthy. Hope everybody stays safe. Hope everybody shows up for jury duty when they're summoned and we'll see you all next year. Thanks for being here. <laughs>